drive some cars? Yes. yes. All right. Um, just uh, I want to spend about 15 minutes before we get out there and tell you a little bit about uh, some of the thinking that went in behind the new soul, uh, specifically uh, what we were up against, but more importantly for us and as a product planner, how do you replace a car that's been as successful as Soul, an icon, a company for the marketplace. Because Soul really <clears throat> represents that really unique nexus between uh, function, affordable practicality, and also design. It sits at the middle of this really unique junction in the marketplace. As Michael mentioned, the sales have been phenomenal on it. So going forward, as product planners, we had to figure out how do we replace this? So for us, probably the biggest challenge is when you're looking at a vehicle such as an icon, and probably Volkswagen had to do the same thing for the Beetle, Mazda with the Miata, and uh, Nissan with the Xterra. For us, this is something that you don't want to screw up. And as Michael mentioned, there's a lot of writing on this vehicle. So for us, we looked at those competitive examples that showed how to replace an icon. And we also were beneficial in the fact that we were able to see maybe some ideas on how not to do it. For us, really, uh, the market is evolving. As Michael had mentioned, we dominate the box category. And one of the big successes for Soul has been the fact that it's really difficult to put this vehicle in a box, no pun intended. Uh, mainly because, and as you saw from the data, it's pulling from every category. It's pulling from compact, it's pulling from midsize, it's pulling from even SUVs that people are downsizing. So we're, it's at this, this place where you can't really see it. So others have seen this opportunity in the B crossover segment. And as a result, we, of all the other box cars out there, we have by far the highest sales. And as a result, the XB and the Cube are now moving on and getting out of the segment. However, new entries are coming on. And here we show the three newest entries into this kind of B crossover segment, the uh, Mini Countryman, Fiat 500L, and the Nissan Juke. And we've seen from our own data, uh, hearing from our own dealers, that our car and all these others are being cross-shopped with compact cars in the segment. And really, it offers this opportunity to get a little bit more personality, a little bit more function, in a car that's priced relatively the same as a compact, but with a lot more personality. So for us, as a product planner, what we had to focus on is really doing three things. We had to maintain that iconic design nature, which made Soul so successful, and give it a fresh take, update it. Uh, we needed to add desirability both on the inside and on the outside. And probably for us, the biggest opportunity was to improve the dynamic experience with the vehicle. And we hope that you guys will see the same thing today. In fact, we're so proud of the achievement that we made with this latest generation vehicle, we brought on the uh, Alcoid vehicle for you to drive. So over the course of uh, this afternoon and this evening, make sure that uh, you talk to PR to get some time behind the wheel of the Alcoid car. It's really important to have that contrast between the old and the new. And it all starts with the look. And probably this was the biggest challenge as Tom Kern's quote up here talks about for his design team to take this on. Uh, to really replace this icon. So the first thing that we had to uh, clearly identify is what were the success factors that made Soul, Soul successful in the marketplace. And by far the biggest area was this very unique profile, the very boxy upright profile, rear end, very vertical, vertical tail lamps, a very wheel centric design where you see these big hoops over the wheels. Uh, a very upright eight pillar that's been blacked out and this very unique trapezoid shape for the window profile, we call it the DLO. So it gives you this, as you look at the car from across the parking lot between the boxy profile and this trapezoidal shape across, it's very, very iconic. And all those items we had to preserve going into the new vehicle. And I think also some of the other areas that were originally designed, inspired, uh, Michael mentioned Michael Torpy at the very beginning. He designed this idea of a, of a tusk bumper, and he liked the idea of the tusks on the front of the, uh, the boards that he was studying. So he had uh, incorporated this design to the original car, and it's here again on the, on the current car. So very iconic, uh, looks like the old car, 
However, the shape has been refreshed. Uh, the surfaces are a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more sophisticated, more fuller uh, overall figure. And as a result, you see some of the detailed surfacing. You can't see it here, but when you get it on the light, it's got these beautiful light lines that go across the surface of the vehicle. It's really nice tension that uh, really makes the car stand out. So overall, the overall impression is a little bit more sophisticated, more refined, but still very iconic. And the same story for the interior. This is probably, as I mentioned, uh, the biggest opportunity we had on uh, design from the areas that we could approve. And for the product planning side, very also probably the biggest challenge. Uh, we used the Trackster, which we showed at Chicago in 2012, as the inspiration for the vehicle. And because, uh, as you saw in the commercials on the outset, <clears throat> music is so important to both the marketing campaign, the personality for the vehicle, that the designers used music as kind of the inspiration for when they're working on a new car. If you go into the studio, they got the music blaring and a lot of cool ideas are going on. So this idea of a sonic ring, or the, if you look at the uh, visual signature of sound, it's a circular, circular ring. So they incorporated that idea into this new vehicle. You see on the door panel, you see it in the center console, even these iconic uh, vents in the corner of the vehicle that you'll see today. It's uh, it's actually an engineering work of feet, these vents there. It's a vent, a side defroster, and also a speaker grill on the corner. Very iconic. And as you also notice, the center the center stack also has this a very circular paint. So overall, the, um, the overall design inspiration was to incorporate a lot more of a iconic nature on the interior than we did on the exterior, but also to improve the materials and all of the, the, the touch surfaces throughout the vehicle. Everywhere you touch the vehicle on the door panels, the instrument cluster is a new uh, slush mold urethane type material, which is very expensive, which is a huge battle for uh, product planning to work with engineering and finance to get that funded. Uh, even down to the center console, the finishes on the console itself, and the steering wheel specifically was, des was designed by Peter Schreier to have a very unique, sophisticated feel in the hand, including hand-stitched leather cover. So everywhere you look on the inside of the vehicle, and again, this is important to look at the old car relative to the new car and see how much of a change we've made on the, uh, the vehicle overall. Quite dramatic.